All right, in this video we're going to talk about uh, differential probes. Uh, one of my YouTube viewers asked me about this. Uh, differential probes are typically used with oscilloscopes to make what we call differential measurements. And in a sense, really all voltage measurements can be considered differential, meaning that we're measuring the voltage between two points in a circuit. Uh, when we make measurements with meters or uh, DMMs and things like that, you know, these instruments are floating, so you simply can make and probe any two points that you desire. Okay, so for example, I could take these two scope, these two probes here from uh, my multimeter, and I can simply, you know, connect them between any two arbitrary points within a circuit, like maybe between the collector and emitter of this little amplifier I have here. Okay, um, and uh, and go make that measurement. Uh, I can't do that with an oscilloscope because most oscilloscopes are not floating. Okay, meaning that uh, you know one side of the of each input is connected to ground, like the shell of the BNC here. So it kind of forces you to make all your measurements with respect to ground. Okay, so in order to make a differential measurement, uh, we can do two things. We can use two probes that are matched and in delay, matched in in attenuation or response, uh, and uh, and then display channel one minus channel two. Okay. And uh, the new, you know, any modern digital scope can actually use do that as a kind of like a math operation. The older analog scopes typically had a way of uh, inverting one of the channels and then adding them together. So that's channel one plus the inverse of channel two is like doing channel one minus channel two. So in this case, I'm st I'm looking at channel one and channel two, uh, which is the collector and emitter of that amplifier circuit I showed you. And if I invert channel two and add them, now this voltage here is the differential voltage between them. Okay, But now I've used two scope channels to make essentially one measurement. All right, And uh, if you only have a two channel scope like this one here, then you really can't use a scope to do anything else at the same time other than making that one measurement. So differential probes allow you to do that. Okay, uh, by making you know, essentially that measurement into one scope channel. Okay, so the differential probes are designed to respond to the voltage difference between those two uh, pins, and not respond to the voltage of either of those with respect to ground. Okay, the former uh, of that we call that the differential mode or differential voltage, and then the common mode voltage is you know is where those signals are with respect to ground. So the differential probe is going to reject that common mode and only look at and respond to that differential voltage. So here's an example of a typical differential probe. This one's a Tektronix TDP1000 uh, plugged into the scope here. And I've got that connected up to that collector and emitter point on the uh, that same circuit that we showed here. And uh, that's the voltage. So, uh, very simple. Uh, probes like this generally come with uh, some nice accessories. Um, I'm not going to pull them all out of the thing here, but you've got accessories that allow you to, you know, connect up with pins or maybe adjustable pins to kind of probe down on your circuit board. Maybe some solder down adapters, some adapters with socket leads or a little uh, test clips and things like that. Uh, so uh, different ways of, you know, being able to connect that probe up into uh, your circuit of interest. Now this again, this happens to be kind of a general purpose differential probe. Uh, these are typically active probes. There's a differential amplifier, uh, usually in the, in the probe head, uh, and some power circuitry and stuff like that in the uh, in the probe to to make that measurement. So, um, uh, and again, this is more of a general purpose one. There are differential probes that go up to tens of gigahertz of bandwidth um, on the high speed end of things. But also, one of the very important applications for differential probes is power circuits. So here's a, uh, a differential probe that's kind of geared towards power applications. This is a 200 megahertz high voltage differential probe. This one can, can measure up to 1500 volts uh, differentially, and then those voltages can be plus or minus a thousand volts uh, from ground. So uh, you know, more for you know, power type applications. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the applications where we'd use differential probes. Okay, so we mentioned power. Switch mode power supplies, DC to DC converters, inverters, motor drivers, things like that. Uh, that's a pretty uh, a pretty good application area. Here's an example. Here's like a, a buck converter. Say we want to measure the voltage across uh, this switching the switching device, this FET here between drain to source. 
we want to, may want to measure that on one channel and do a current measurement on another channel to look at the power dissipation in that device. Well, you notice that neither side of this device is connected to ground, so in order to make that measurement, I really want a differential probe across there. Okay. Uh, we may also have, uh, like, here's a, a half bridge driver and an inverter. You know, this situation, I might want to measure the turn on voltage, the gate to source voltage here. And that, uh, that voltage that voltage difference, you know, may be, you know, just a couple of volts, but the, those voltages, any one of them can be, you know, in this case could be anywhere between 180 and minus 180 volts, depending on which device is on. So that common mode voltage we don't want to see, but the difference voltage between them we do. So the differential probe would work in that application. Okay. Uh, other applications are like, say, audio. Uh, power amplifiers are a good example. Sometimes we have bridge amplifiers and things like that, or push-pull amps that we might want to make some differential measurements on, or sometimes also uh, balanced audio. Okay. So um, take a look at uh, some of those examples here. Kind of take it for this schematic over here. Oh, oh, here's another power example. Here's like a motor driver, like an H bridge. You might want to measure the voltage across this motor. Okay, depending on which devices are on. So here's some audio power amplifier applications. You might have this kind of a, a bridge type driver where the audio is kind of driven differentially, okay, to drive the speaker. You want to measure the voltage across the, spe the speaker, okay. You can do that with a diff probe. Here's a kind of a push-pull driver here. Maybe we want to measure, you know, the differential voltage or the voltage across either of these resistors to see if we've got a problem with you know, either the push-pull devices or something like that. So uh, also balanced audio, that's another uh, interesting one. It's typically used uh, to reduce noise uh, in pickup and things like that. If we think about a, a low-level microphone, okay, sending its audio signal, you know, say down this line. If, uh, you know, we ran by a heavy-duty transformer or some fluorescent light ballast, you might couple some noise onto that line and that adds onto the audio, okay. So that at the end, when we go into the amplifier down here, we might have actually added noise in. So balanced audio is often used where the microphone it sends its signal down two lines and ideally those two lines sometimes even will carry the uh, complementary versions of the signal. So for example on this pin we might see the audio doing this and on this pin with respect to ground it might do just the opposite. Okay, So that now the information is carried in the difference voltage. So now if we get that same kind of noise get injected in here from ballasts or transformers that noise will couple onto each line equally, okay, so that whole thing will kind of couple up or down. It doesn't change the difference voltage, it only changes the common mode voltage. So now when this goes into the amplifier here, the amplifier is only going to see the difference voltage. It doesn't really matter if there's noise that's coupling on both lines. So we're able to reduce the amount of noise coupled in by looking only at the differential voltage. So again, a differential probe would be handy in those types of applications to look at that voltage. And for the same reasons um, as of noise immunity, this is why high-speed serial interfaces typically use uh, differential probes um, or differential signaling. They'll send you know, the data in one phase, or you know, say, and then the data in an inverting phase on another line, so that between the two, okay, when this guy is sending a, a zero, that guy's sending a one. When this guy's sending a one, this guy's sending a zero. So that now if we took the difference voltage between them, okay, we can reconstruct the, those ones and zeros again back in the line receiver. And if any noise gets coupled onto those signals, uh, they, they would be coupled on equally, so it won't affect the difference voltage. It'll just make that voltage ride up or down, whether it's, you know, a one or a zero, okay. But the difference between them doesn't really change, okay. So uh, again, we get the benefit of noise immunity. So this is how a lot of high-speed uh, serial interfaces, things like uh, you know, Ethernet or USB, or even uh, serial interfaces that are used in high noise environments like automotive buses, like CAN bus or Flexray. They typically use differential signaling uh, so that any noise that gets coupled onto the signals gets coupled on equally in common mode and would get rejected when looked at differentially. So again, differential probes can help uh, when you're looking at uh, those types of signals as well. So, uh, anyways, that's what differential probes are, some of the applications where they might get used. Um, one more thing to think about is some, some important considerations with differential probes. Obviously, bandwidth is a big consideration. It is an active probe, 
So um, you do have to worry about uh, you know what its bandwidth is and, and also some other considerations. The probe is going to have either some gain or attenuation associated with it. You also have to take care to look at what the differential voltage range and the common mode voltage range is for the probes to ensure that in your application you don't exceed it either of those. And then there's one more uh, parameter which uh, is kind of important. It's called the common mode rejection ratio. Okay. And uh, probably the easiest way to think about this is, is kind of this high-speed serial example. Is let's say you know we've got some you know some energy that gets coupled onto these lines. Okay, it's going to make these lines move up and down. Okay. Uh, again, we, ideally we're only going to look at the differential voltage, but um, uh, and same thing with the differential probe. We'll only look at those differentially. But you know no probe is ideal, so the probe might have some response to the common mode voltage. Okay, and in, and typically that. You know how how well it rejects the common mode voltage is a function of frequency. So typically, as frequency goes up, the common mode rejection goes down. So and typically, there will be specs for the CMRR or common mode rejection ratio of uh, of differential probes. And that's one of the real downsides of doing the differential uh, mode like we did here, is that even if you get matched sets of probes and you're really careful about keeping everything matched, the common mode rejection of a situation like this is generally pretty good at DC, but once uh, you start getting up in frequency, the common mode rejection of this type of situation is pretty lousy, okay? Where the common mode rejection of, uh, of differential probes like these could be 60, 70, 80 dB or so, so really quite good. So uh, it's another uh, kind of important consideration and a good reason to use differential probes as opposed to uh, doing the, uh, the invert and add trick uh, on the oscilloscope. So anyway, I hope this helped describe what uh, differential probes are and, uh, and how you'd use them in what type of situations uh, and with a quick example or two here. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, comments always welcome. Thank you.